today we are going to start a new topic which is called a curve in space so it is a topic of differential geometry so what is curve in space so understand that curve in space first differential geometry so what is differential geometry so it is a branch of geometry which treated with the help of differential calculus so this is a definition of differential geometry it is a branch of geometry which treated with the help of differential calculus second it is the study of curve in space so differential geometry is nothing but it is the study of curve in space and surfaces and curves on the surfaces so differential geometry is the study of curve in space and curve on surfaces and also it is a surfaces study on surfaces so this is a differential geometry now this differential geometry is divided into two parts one is which is called local differential geometry and second is which is called global differential geometry so what is the local differential geometry so in order to understand the local differential geometry in this branch we study how the curve behave at a point with respect to neighboring point so in this differential geometry we study how the curve behave at a point with respect to neighboring point so that is called a local differential geometry and second is global differential geometry in this we study the property of curve and surfaces as a whole so in this we study the property of curves and surfaces as a whole now what is curve in space a curve in space is the locus of a point whose position vector r vector with respect to fixed origin may be represented as the function of single variable t now remember in a curve which is a equation whose position vector is a r it is a function of only one parameter that is a t clear so in the next chapter we will discuss the surfaces so in the surface surfaces the position vector depending upon two variables so in so differentiate these two uh, definition one is curve second is surfaces so in the curve the position vector r with respect to fixed origin may be represented as function of single variable which is denoted as t so that is in case of curve in case of surface this position vector this position vector it is a function of two variable that we will discuss on later on that depending on u and v variable so here you remember so curve in space is the locus of a point whose position vector r whose position vector r with respect to fixed origin with respect to fixed origin may be represented as function of single variable that variable is basically t variables right so this is a curve in space now how we can write that curve in space now suppose if r is a some position vector if r is some position vector of current point so this is position vector of some current point p on a space curve whose cartesian coordinate r x y z then r can be represented as x i cap plus y j cap plus z k cap so that is written in this equation now x is function of one variable y is function of one variable and z is function of one variable so s can be written in the form of f1 of t y can be written in the form of f2 t and z can be written in the form of f3 t clear 
so in vector notation it is represented as r vector so this r vector which is a f1 t comma f2 t comma f3 t so this function r this is r vector position vector this is represented as it is a vector which depends upon a single variable that single variable is t so this r is a vector vector valued function which depends upon a single variable t so remember the position vector in curve in space curve is represented as vector valued function of a single variables right so this is a definition and mathematical mathematical uh, definition of a uh, vector space curve in a space now these two points must be noted a space curve may also be expressed as the intersection of two surfaces right so this is equation of one surface and this is the equation of second surface right so then intersection of these two surfaces if we take the intersection of these two surfaces that will be a curve that will be a space curve so remember that a space curve may also be expressed as the intersection of two surfaces right a curve is called a plane curve now next definition is what is the plane curve right a curve is called a plane curve if it lies on a plane otherwise it is said to be a skew or twisted right so a curve is called plane curve if it lies on a plane if it does not lie on a plane then it is called a skew or twisted skew or twisted curve so uh, we have two kind of uh, curve one is plane curve second is skew or twisted so what is plane curve plane curve is that if curve lie on a plane then it is called a plane curve if it is not plane curve then it is called a skew or twisted skew or twisted curve now next definition is, is function of class n right so class n means it has continuous derivative of n -th order it has continuous derivative of n -th order clear if it possesses continuous derivative continuous derivative of n -th order at each point of i then it is called cn function what do you mean by cn function cn function is a if it possesses continuous derivative of nth order then it is called cn functions now in the curve if we take suppose this is some curve right so this is some curve clear so arc length is represented in the form of s remember this is arc length and r is position vector which depends on the which depends on the t one parameter it may be u it may be v so uh, it should be depending on one parameter then r dash so no remember the notation the dash notation is denoted for s so if we differentiate with respect to s that is denoted by dash so if we differentiate with respect to t t means parameter it may be u it may be any other parameter if we differentiate with respect to t right so this is treated as a dot clear yeah. so this is t is not a time so remember t is a parameter so we have two options either if we divide if we differentiate with respect to s then it is denoted by r dash r double dash r triple dash and so on if it we differentiate with respect to t that is a parameter not time then it can be written as r dot r vector double dot and so on so that is written in this equation right so remember this 
Now, how we can find the unit tangent vector to a curve? Here. So, our next topic is which is very, very important topic. So, that the basis of a, this chapter which is a unit tangent vector. So, in the definition, in the name of this vector, we know the definition. Unit means its magnitude is 1. Tangent means tangent vector or to the curve. So, this, this name itself contains the definition. Clear? So, it is a unit tangent vector. So, it contains, it is a vector, it is a tangent vector and it is a unit. Unit means it has magnitude 1. Clear? So, here we take this curve. This is a some curve. Clear? So, this is some curve which is denoted as, suppose this is a curve which is denoted as C. Suppose this is a curve C. Right? So, this is curve C. Clear? Now, there are two neighboring points on the curve. So, one neighboring point is P. Remember, this is P. And second neighboring point is Q. Clear? This is Q. And this is a fixed point which is a origin. Right? This is a fixed point which is a origin. Clear? Now, what is the position vector of P? So, position vector of P is R. So, this is R vector. Then, what is the position vector of Q? So, this is R vector plus delta R vector. Right? So, this is a position vector of Q and this is a position vector of R. So, this can be represented as OP and this can be represented as OQ. Clear? So, this OP vector basically what is this? This OP vector which is a R vector. Clear? So, this is a R vector which is a OP vector which is a R vector and this vector which is a this vector which is a r plus a delta r vector clear so r plus delta r vector this is a oq vector then by triangle law this pq vector is a delta r vector which is a oq minus op which is equal to delta r clear that we will discuss at this point now tangent at p now this t vector which is a at this point this is a tangent at p vector clear so t vector is a unit tangent vector that is we represented as clear now how we can find the value of t vector or unit tangent vectors clear? so this is the geometry of the our entire article now list first this a is again fixed point on a r curve. If A is fixed point of curve, then AP is represented as arc length, which is S. And similarly, AQ arc length is S plus delta S. So, P has position vector R and arc length S. Right? And Q has position vector this and arc length S plus delta R. So, remember these two things. Now, this is R AP which is equal to S, arc AQ which is equal to S plus delta R. Now by triangle law, we have PQ vector. This can be written as position vector of Q minus position vector of P. So this is a OQ minus OP, right? OQ minus OP. What is the value of OQ? This is R plus delta R. What is the value of OP? which is minus, this is minus R vector. So, this is a delta R, right? So, this is a PQ vector. This PQ vector, which is equal to delta R. We already discussed as in. Now, this is a T unit vector, clear? So, this tangent, when Q approaches to P, then this PQ, this PQ will become the tangent at P, clear? So, when this move on, when Q approaches to P, right? So, this point will, this point will move to the P. So, this line, this line, this will changing their position. This will move, 
this line, this PQ line, this move. As Q move, this PQ line moves. Clear? So at this point, this line will be this. Next point, it will be this. Now, at this point, when when Q is at this point, so this line will be at this point. Clear? So when it moves to this, then it is at this point. When it moves to this, then it is at this point. So this point. When it moves to at point P, so this line will be along this direction. This direction. Right? Along this direction. Clear? So it means when Q approaches to P, when Q approaches to P, then this, this PQ vector will become a tangent. But it is not unit tangent. Unit tangent will become when it is divided by its magnitude. Clear? So when Q approaches to P, then this PQ vector, this PQ vector will become the unit tangent vector. Right? If it will become the unit tangent vector, right? If it become the unit tangent vector, in that case, it is a, uh, in the, that is, will become the, along the vector T. Clear? It will become unit tangent vector when this vector is divided by its magnitude. Clear? So, we have two things to find the unit vector. One, it when Q approaches to P. Second, this vector is divided by its magnitude. Clear? So, here, unit vector, here, unit vector, along the chord PQ, right, that we are already discussing. This is PQ vector over magnitude of PQ, right. So, it will be when Q approaches to P. Now, here it is not a unit vector. Unit vector will become when Q approaches to P. Now, from this, what is PQ? This is a vector and this is a delta R or this is it's a chord, chord PQ. Then this can be written as if we divide by arc PQ and also multiply by arc PQ, this arc PQ and this arc PQ. Clear? So this will become delta R by delta S. Now this is arc over chord. Now when Q approaches to P, then arc and chord, chord will be equal when Q approaches to P. Here, this is a, this is a arc, this is a chord. When Q approaches to P, so this point will be this. In that case, delta R and delta S, it will be same. This will be same. Then their length will be same. If their length will be same, approximate equal, so, this value is equal to 1. This value equal to 1. So, if this value equal to 1, but when? When as Q approaches to P, this value equal to 1. If this value equal to 1, when it approaches to P, then chord, this chord will become the tangent. As we discussed, so it will become the tangent at P. If it will become the tangent at P, so this T vector, which is written as limit Q approaches P, delta R by delta S. So what is this? What is this? Q approaches mean mean delta S approaches to 0. So it is a derivative of R with respect to S. So this is a definition of unit tangent vector. So what is? It is very important result. So what is unit tangent vector? Unit tangent vector is dr by ds. So it is also unit and also it is a tangent vector. But dr by dt, that is tangent vector but not a unit tangent vector. So remember, it is a unit tangent vector, clear? Or that is a tangent, uh, uh, tangent vector, ja, that is a vector along the tangent direction. Clear? Now, next step. If we take R vector as a xi plus yj plus zk, then this t vector which is equal to dr by ds, now differentiate with respect to s, 
so it will become this dr by ds dy by ds dz by ds now in order to convert it in the dot form right so we can write this in this form in this form dx by dt into dt by dx so this will be cancel so it will be dx right so what is this this is x dot what is this it is a reciprocal of s dot it is a derivative of s with respect to t it is a derivative of x so this can be written in this form clear so this can be written in this form now we know that magnitude the modulus of t vector is 1 because it is a unit vector so this can be written as this square this square plus this square plus this square and sare the square root okay if we taking square then square root will be removed clear so this will become a s dot square which is equal to x dot square plus y dot square plus z dot square so this is the second part this is the value of s dot in term of x dot y dot and z clear now next uh, what is equation of tangent line here we discuss the tangent unit tangent vector now here we are going to discuss uh, its equation what is the equation of tangent line clear so same this is a uh, these are the points uh, p and this is some q point this point p is on the curve right so this is a uh, its uh, position vector this and this point is a uh, uh, q clear now this pq what is pq it is a parallel to vector t this pq right this uh, uh, what is this q is the point on the arbitrary point on the tangent line so remember this clear so this is a uh, we want to find the equation of pq and q is the point on a tangent line tangent line right now what is this line pq which is parallel to t vector because it is along the unit tangent vector if this is parallel to t vector then this by definition of parallel of vector one is scalar multiplication of another then pq vector which is a scalar multiplication of t vector right this is lambda into t vector clear what is lambda lambda is its magnitude its length clear right now what is the pq vector again by definition this can be written as oq minus op o is the fixed point which is origin and op right this values now if we take the position vector of q which is r capital r right this is a position vector of q which is a capital r and position vector of p which is small r we want to find the locus of q clear so we want to find the value of r vector so what is r vector r vector can be find from this what is pq vector this is a pq vector what is oq vector this is a oq vector what is op vector this is a op vector so capital r which is equal to small r plus lambda t so which is a equation of tangent line so remember again what is the equation of tangent line which is capital r vector equal to small r vector plus lambda t vector right now remember what is this r vector this is a position of arbitrary point on tangent line right what is this small r vector where we want want to find the tangent clear so it is a position vector of point p where we want to find a tangent of the tangent of the point clear now again in the form cartesian form this capital r is represented in the capital x form and this capital small r can be represented in the small x forms theek hai 
then this will become r minus r capital r minus small r this is capital x minus small x into i capital y minus small y j plus capital z minus small z j right so what is t t is dr by ds okay then by definition this can be written in this form okay this can be written in this form now from this definition substitute these values this is r minus r into lambda t so what is t t is r dash so this is a lambda r dash so r minus r vector will become this values clear and lambda r dash will become this values now equating this will be equal to this values this will equal to this this will equal to this so from this we get this equation so which is a equation of tangent line so this is a equation of tangent line now remember this dx by ds dy by ds and dz by ds these are these are direction cosines these are direction cosines if we replace by with the respect to t then these are direction ratio if there will be dx by dt dy by dt dz by dt in that case this is the direction ratio but with respect to s it is a direction cosine so remember uh, this difference clear so similarly to find in term of t parameter we can go through the same procedure here the difference is that this uh, pq vector is uh, parallel to t vector again t vector is parallel to r dot vector now the process will be continue with these two vector because these are parallel clear so this again on the same line of action same doing the same just changing Uh, lambda in place of mu and r dash in place of r dot clear so going to the same procedure we get this values so here this dx by dt dy by dt and dz by dt these are direction ratio so remember don't confuse yourself that these are not a direction cosines these are direction ratios these are not direction cosines so direction cosines are dx by ds dy by ds dz by ds clear yeah. so this is the equation of a uh, straight line now next is very very important very very important plane which is called a osculating plane very important osculating plane clear yeah. so we will find the equation of osculating plane in next lecture but here we will discuss the definition so what is definition now understand it is let q and r be any two points on a curve clear which are close to p which are close to p clear so there is some curve suppose this is some curve this is some curve and here there are two points one point and this is a second one so these are neighboring points suppose this is a q point suppose this is a r point clear and this point is some p point which is neighboring which q and r are close to p clear yeah. remember this q and r this q and r this is on the curve but p is not on the curve which is close to p then limiting position of the plane clear yeah. so this limiting position when q approaches to p and r approaches to p then limiting position of the plane pqr pqr 
so this is a plane p q r when q and r approaches to p independently is called a osculating plane at p so this is called osculating plane at p clear so someone some kind of some confusing definition so we will analyze and the geometry will be understand in the next lecture but remember the basic if two points on the curve and third point which is near to these two points then this the limiting position of this plane when these two approaches to p one is approaches to t p and this is again approaches to uh, p clear in that case that plane is called a osculating plane clear that is called a osculating plane so if that is called a osculating plane that is osculating plane at this point p clear so this is called a osculating